Hello all, so in this video I am going to explain the software part of our snake game. So I am calling our snake game as snake to indicate this is a game on Z board. So the overall software it is divided into multiple source codes and header files uh, mainly for code reuse. So we will be using a lot of the code that we are writing in this tutorial for the subsequent tutorials also. So the first one is this file game top dot c this is the topmost file which has the main function and this is the one which is uh, doing the overall control of the game now in addition to that we have this video.h and video.c these files they are doing the initialization of our video controller so the code here you have already seen before this is basically just doing initialization of the video controller as well as uh, connecting the video controller with the interrupt controller so that interrupt controller will be passed from the top file game.top and he just uh, initialized the vdma and connects it with the interrupt system we are not using any uh, interrupt service routine for vdma but still we are just connecting the interrupt controller with these uh, interrupt handles but nothing is actually happening inside now another one is these two files, the graphics.h and graphics.c. So uh, in actual uh, C language, if you have used in a PC environment, there is a header file called graphics.h which will help you to generate graphics. You can draw lines or circles using the functions there. But if you directly try graphics.h in uh, Silings SDK, you'll get an error saying like there is no such header file. So uh, the Silings SDK doesn't come with the graphics.h. Because of course, this file, uh, this header file, it works with the operating system. Uh, the system calls to show all these graphics, so that is not possible in standalone. So uh, we are creating our own graphics.h header file, and here we have information such as the definition of different colors. So you can see I have defined black color, white color, etc. Uh, basically, they are RGB values. The, so the lowest uh, byte that is R, then G, then B. Okay, so this is black, this is white, this is red, so on and so forth. So if you want to define your own colors, you are uh, free to add additional colors here. You can just add the RGB values. Then there are a lot of functions inside that. So one function is to draw some image on the screen. Uh, for this project, we are not using this function. Actually, this function was used for the previous project for, for drawing Lena on your screen. But uh, if you want to draw the figure of a snake or something, you can actually do it using this function. This one is used for drawing the frame. When you, when you play the game, there are the four walls uh, around the playing area. So this is the function which is used for drawing that and you will see like every function it, it is taking a lot of arguments it can take arguments like where this should be drawn and what should be the width what should be the height what should be the color and also a pointer to the video buffer again this buffer will be passed from the top file he'll be passing he'll be generating the buffer here you can see this is the video buffer and that will be passed to these functions whenever we are calling them and this function is used for printing a single character on the screen okay so that is an interesting thing so in OLED we have seen how can we print characters on OLED same concept we are going to reuse so you will see soon print string is basically to print a string so internally this function is using this print char in a loop until he prints all the characters and draw square this function it just draws a square on the screen with the specified size and color and the specified location okay so these are the declaration and here we have the definition for all those function may look a bit complicated because these are basically some mapping function uh, to to a from a single array to that video buffer so that's why it is looking slightly complicated but if you read you might understand now another header file is this one snake.h so this is the main header file which has all the definitions corresponding to our game so we have the information like what is the clock frequency of our hardware so this you shouldn't modify unless you are modifying the clock frequency 
in the actual hardware okay so we are running the snake portion at 100 megahertz so keep it as such and this basically defines what should be the initial speed of the snake uh, in seconds i have put it at half second so snake will be moving every half second so you can put any value that you like here uh, depending upon that the initial speed will change so this one init delay value again you should not change the equation this equation is basically calculating what should be the initialization value to our event timer this timer which is controlling basically the interrupts to the snake controller based on that the snake is moving okay so it will be calculated based on these two values now this basically says after how many points the size of the snake should increase so now it is done again you can change to whatever value you want this basically defines by what factor the speed should reach so now it is two that means the speed will increase after catching 10 price so if you don't want to increase the speed you can just set it to one so the snake will always move at uh, constant speed okay now uh, here we have again something called the grid size so remember our previous tutorial where i have mentioned how our entire screen is divided into grids into squares so this is basically deciding what should be the size of each square in the grid so 40 means 40 pixels okay each square will be 40 pixels again by changing this value you can uh, increase the size of the uh, snake i mean uh, the width of the snake because it will be always one grid size wide so if you put 40 it will be 40 pixels wide if you put 80 it will be 80 pixels wide so on and so forth this is basically saying after this all these parameters are in terms of uh, grid size how many squares should be there so this is the width of the frame that you are drawing so it is always one grid size and this is the height and width of your playing area now i have set it to 20 by 20 so you will see it is a square on the screen again this you can increase now uh, currently there is no checking whether this size exceeds the screen size if you want you can add that option and you can give an error like he cannot draw this much big uh, uh, frame things like that and again these two you should not change they are basically calculating the horizontal and vertical position of the frame in in terms of grids and it will always try to place that uh, uh, big playing area at the middle of your screen okay so again don't change it this is the color of your frame now it is set to brown color and this is basically saying where the score should be shown okay so now it is uh, again, this this is in terms of pixels not in terms of grids so this will be on top right corner its size horizontal size of the display minus uh, 400 that is the offset now this decides the mode okay so if you define white mode your screen will be white snake will be black otherwise uh, screen will be black snake will be white and this is the color of the prey currently the prey will be green color okay now this is the structure as we mentioned before when we develop driver we will always uh, represent our hardware as a structure this is the structure which is representing our entire snake controller and there is not much information here it basically has the information about the base address of the uh, snake controller uh, this ip and also the base address of the timer and the base address of the gpio remember we have a gpio for detecting the uh, middle button press right so this is having all this information now you can combine all these uh, ips in hardware into a single ip and the timer the snake tracker as well as the gpu into a single ip so in this case in that case you will have a single base address but here we have three different base addresses because we have three different ips then there are a lot of functions actually for initialization to show the welcome screen to show game over things like that that we will see where these functions are used when we discuss the uh, topmost module now another interesting one is this header file phone.h so as you have seen 
in many cases we have to show character on the screen okay and this time we have to show characters in different sizes also because on the welcome screen you can see i'm showing snake in big letters as well as the game over i'm showing in big letters but the score i'm showing in small letter okay now if you start to store all this information in our memory it is going to take a lot of memory so what we usually do is we represent again like our OLED every character in in the form of an 8 by 8 matrix okay so that you can do using the same software i showed you before this glcd font creator you can import any of the existing system font only thing you may have to do is uh, it won't be in 8 by 8 so you can go ahead and delete some rows and columns here there are option here uh, delete row things like that and you can make it 8 by 8 then you can say export to glcd and here you will get a big array and each row in the array is representing one character okay so if i'm using 8 by 8 so each row there will be only eight entries representing uh, one character so that is what i have put here this one the only thing you may need to change is uh, they'll be declaring it as uh, i guess short type yeah unsigned short that means it is going to take two bytes although you can see only one byte here internally it will be stored in two bytes we don't want that we want to store everything in one byte so instead of short just choose care so that uh, each one of them represent one byte so you can see every character is stored using eight bytes same idea as our OLED and every byte here represent one column so for example if I have letter R here okay so the first byte here first byte here is representing the first column here second byte there this one will represent the second column so and so forth that's why we have eight entries it is column wise and uh, this will be the ms bit this will be the ls bit that's how the information is stored so i am just storing this single array now using some math technique i can adjust the size of the phone when i am displaying it uh, that is a basic technique used for zooming things on screen so this is how I am storing R. Now, if you want a larger R, okay, what you'll do is you'll just replicate every row and every column. See here. So, if it is a single column of empty cells, you just replicate it. Here you have a single row of uh, this thing, you just replicate it. So, if you do like that, you will get a bigger R. The size of this R is actually four times this one because you are replicating every row and column. So you'll see uh, in the functions here in graphics.h, we have function like uh, print cap, print string, etc. And you will see they are taking a parameter called a zoom. And this is where you specify how big the character should be. If you put uh, zoom as one, your characters will be. 8 pixels by 8 pixels so it will be very difficult to see them okay so if you put a zoom to that means it will replicate every row and column twice so actually you are getting four times so by controlling this parameter you can make your characters bigger uh, as you wish the smallest size is that of 8 by 8 pixels you cannot go uh, beyond that smaller than that Okay, so that's an interesting technique that we can use throughout in our future tutorials also. So again, you will have to look at the code. Again, it may look complicated because again, like our GLCD, what happens is this entire thing is represented using one byte. Okay, so you will have one to represent it is white, zero to represent it is black. Now, when you display it on our monitor, which is a tricolor, and each pixel is composed of three bytes, not a single byte, a single bit.
okay so one bit here you will have to map to three bytes when you when you show it on the screen and for that we will have to do some some math calculation that's what you are doing it so here I am taking one bit and I am isolating it using these things then I am multiplying it with the RGB components of the color that you are specifying okay so this is uh, same pixel here from that uh, so you'll see like this much part is exactly same then I am taking the RGB components from the color that you are specifying then I am mapping it into three bytes of the video frame okay so that's how you'll see it on the screen okay now this is the top one so you can see initially what we are doing is we just initialize the interrupt controller and that interrupt controller is also passed to this function init video you have seen which basically initializes our video may controller and also connects the interrupt controller with the video may interrupt this function it initializes the snake structure so you have seen the structure there which is representing our hardware and this function will basically take these parameters all these parameters are coming from our x parameters dot h the base addresses of the three ips and he will take uh, all those addresses and just initialize the structure the structure is here the structure is here we generate one instance from that structure and we use it now you'll see like all other functions it is going to use this structure as a parameter so first one on the screen we will just show big uh, snake and this one again as i said before internally he's using that print string function and he'll just show snake okay and uh, the zoom you can see here it is put 20 okay so it's it, it will be quite big and it'll be shown in red color and it will also do a down counting from three to one zero before we start the game you can see it on the screen how it works so that is done by this function then we have this variable so this variable basically to store what is the current score this basically says what is the initial size of the snake again remember in hardware when we discussed i said our snake size can be one two three four or five because we are initializing five locations in that big array which is representing the snake so you can put any number between one to five there by default it is three now and uh, this information is again written to our ip because inside the hardware he needs to know the size of the snake here the snake size that is done by this function update snake size draw frame this is the one which is basically drawing that big square or rectangle your playing area and this will show uh, when you start the game score zero on the top right okay on the score position which we previously set now delay value again this is the value we set in the header file 0.5 that will come here and later that value will be loaded to our uh, event timer so that value will basically come and it will initialize our down counter here that is what is coming here okay so here again uh, what is the initial position of the snake that we are calculating in software we are always keeping the snake at the middle of our screen i guess maybe better we can change it to the middle of the frame now i am always sitting at the middle of the screen but since the frame is at the middle of the screen should be fine and we are finding the h and y positions and we combine them into into a single position and that information we are sending to our hardware why because that information is used in the hardware here uh, start position it will be coming here and that information will be to use for initializing the head as well as these four 
body parts inside the hardware. Now, as I mentioned, we load the timer value. We will start the timer, the event timer. So what is this basically doing? It will make this counter enable bit high. So your timer starts running now. Reset snake tracker. This will basically reset our core tracker. So that will make this, not this, this signal high. So all the logic inside snake tracker will be resetted. And this is where we are calculating the initial position of the prep. Okay, so get prey position. So this function is again interesting. Okay, so this is the function. So you can do, you can see what it's doing. So it is using the rand function in C to generate a random number, and we make sure that random number is within our playing area using this mode operator. But if you simply use rand function, this is a pseudo random number generator. So every time you uh, call this function the value returned by this function will be always same because it's pseudo random right so each time you start your game after power off and power on the board your prey will be always at the same starting position we don't want that to happen so we need to add more randomness to that so for that we can use this thing s rand the seed rand what this function does is it will set the seed value for the random number generator now to make it very random, what we are doing is we have this event timer, which is always running. Once we start it, it always runs. So he, here we are starting it. So we are just reading the current value from that timer and using it as a seed value for this random number generator. So again, there is some non-determinism in software. Okay, So because of that, the exact time when it will be read from the hardware will change. So each time you play, the number coming from that event timer will be different. So this SRAND will get a different value each time. So you'll see the position of the prey is different each time you start the game. Okay, So we just calculate the X and Y position of the prey and we are just returning it that, val that value here. And this one, <coughs> Okay, we are done. We got the X and Y position of the prey, but uh, I am not showing the prey on the screen at this time. Okay, I will clarify why we are not doing it. You can do it. Okay, so this function is basically drawing a square on the screen uh, in green color at this position. Even if you add this line, it makes no difference, but we are not showing the prey at this moment. Uh, we'll do it later. Okay, so here what we are doing is so. Once we do this much, this is in an infinite while loop, we are entering another while loop, okay? So this while loop is the one which keeps the game running. We will come out of this while loop only when game is over, but we are still stuck in this while loop. So you never exit from your program, basically, unless you power cycle. So once you come out of this while loop, you will restart everything again from the beginning you will see the welcome screen again and we initialize it completely but this while loop make sure you remain in your code remain in this loop as long as uh, there is no game over okay so the here first thing we are doing is restart snake tracker so this is another reset signal which is this one reset read pointer so this signal is basically resetting this read pointer which is reading the position of the snake from that big array which array this big array so we reset that read pointer and this function will read from that array so since we already reset the read pointer when you are reading the first thing that you are going to get is the position of the first cell which is the head of the snake right so we get the head position and from that position, it is a 16-bit number. Lower 8 bits, they represent the X position. Upper, they represent the Y position. So from here onwards, everything is in terms of grids, not in terms of pixels, remember. So once you get the uh, head position, we draw the head on the screen. So currently, we are here, here, this one. 
so currently we are drawing the head in red color so we drew the red color head after that we keep on reading uh, as long as we exhaust the size of the snake so that's why the size of the snake is important so first three right okay so we keep on reading until we read three segments so we already got the head here that's why here i is starting from one not from zero so we read segment by segment and we draw uh, square by square on the screen so we are basically seeing the snake and again depending upon your setting the snake will be either black or white okay so once you finish reading the snake and uh, displaying it on the screen next thing we are checking okay so this is a special case okay so we want to determine the position of the prey which we already did here remember but it is possible the random number generator the position given by the random number generator is somewhere within the body of the snake because he doesn't know what is the current position of the snake right so he just gives a number and that number is somewhere within the body of the snake if it is within the body of the snake uh, our game won't work our prey has to be always outside the snake's body okay so what he does is we check whether it is within the body that is done in hardware okay how it was done remember that is done by this logic so while you are reading the the snake position segment by segment this hardware was comparing the position of the prey with the position of the segment okay and if they are matching for any position other than the head or any position larger than the size of the snake he will make this bit high and uh, that is what you are reading you are reading that bit here and when you see that bit is high you know like okay the prey is in the size uh, in the body of the snake so it doesn't work you need to get a new position you call the same function again and you get a new position of the prey and uh, you are still not drawing that new position okay because it is possible that new position is also in the body of the snake so we'll see how we will avoid that issue or we will try to avoid that issue okay so we got the new position and we are clearing this bit so it will clear this one when we do that operation it will make this bit equal to zero clear prey in body it will clear that next thing we are checking whether the head of the snake hit the body of the snake that is uh, again done in hardware that is done by this logic okay same so these two they are working in parallel this guy is checking whether prey is in the body this guy is checking whether the head hit the body of the snake same logic you will see more or less now if you find the head hit the body that's game over you will break from this while loop and you will come out of the while loop and you will just show game over again this function is just showing game over big on the screen and press send a button and there is another function wait restart what this function does this guy he is keep on reading on the gpio so he is waiting for you to press the center button so unless you press the center button this function will not return you can see it is in an infinite while loop it's in a while loop so once you press the center button it will come out of the while loop otherwise you are stuck there so that's about that game over okay so suppose if the snake didn't hit the body that means you can continue what you need to do is uh, you need to get the tail position of the snake okay here we are getting the tail position which is the last segment fine where we will use it you will see soon here you are checking whether the snake swallowed the prey or not that is done in software so you can see how it is done we already know the position of the head from here we already know the position of the prey from here and if they are matching that means the snake swallowed the prey so if snake swallowed the prey what you have to do you need to add one additional cell to the end of the snake that is why we took 
this tail position so this one is not exactly the tail position this is one position after the tail okay because we read the entire snake in the for loop here so this is one position after the tail again coming from hardware from our big array we are getting that position and at that position we'll draw a new square so you'll feel like the size of the snake has increased and we have this internal variable we will increment that variable and that information is sent back to the hardware here send back because he also needs to know the size of the snake for for this uh, logic to work so we send it back and since he swallowed the prey we have to find a new position for the prey so we calculate a new position for the prey again we increase the score we update the score on the screen so this will increment the score and it will show on the right corner and this logic checks whether score has reached 10 or 20 whatever number you set there and if it has reached that value it will change the delay value for the timer so if you have set 2 this delay value will become delay value by 2 and that value will go to the timer okay so the delay value becomes half means the speed will double that is what is happening now suppose the snake didn't eat the prey what you need to do you need to draw a black square on the last segment after the tail otherwise what is going to happen is when your snake moves okay so the head is moving ahead the snake head is getting new position and every other cell is getting new position and you are reading only from head till the tail and displaying it right but because you displayed the snake in the previous position the tail segment is already white in color so when you move the snake that white square will remain there so you'll see like the snake is moving but there is a white trail behind the snake okay so that you will clearly understand only when you see it on the screen you you can just uncomment it and try it out you will see uh, there is always a trail on the screen from the previous position of the snake okay so for the snake to move you need to update the head position you need to shift every body segment and wherever was the last segment of the tail in the previous display that position you have to update with the, a black square in case your screen is black if it is a uh, white mode you have to update the screen that square with white since the snake is black then only you will feel it like that otherwise uh, you won't feel it okay now this is for a very special case so in our game remember our snake can move under two conditions one is an event from the timer and one is when i press the button to change the direction okay now it is possible uh, while i am running this for loop both the events happens okay so the uh, timer interrupt came as well as i press the button within the time i am running this while loop so in that case what happens is the head position will move by two positions also the tail position will also move by two positions so this logic will work only if the tail position is moving by one position if the snake moves by two position in one shot even if you do like this you will see still there is one white square at the end of the snake one additional eye white line an additional white square okay so that white square also we need to remove so this what does is it reads one more segment from hardware because in hardware we have information about this entire uh, 1600 positions okay it will always update all the positions so we take one more position since the snake moved by two position and we make a black or white square there depending upon your color mode so that you will feel like the snake has moved 
only after that we are drawing the prey. Why we are doing like that? Because it is possible the position of the new prey is either one square after the current tail or two squares after the current tail. Okay, so if you draw the prey somewhere here and when you come here, this black square will replace that green square. So you will see like on the screen, uh, there is no prey. Only snake is there. There is no prey. So to avoid it, we totally update the snake. Only after that, we update the position of the prey. Okay, so that's the technique we use. This function, it is basically checking whether uh, you have kept the center button uh, pressed or not. If you have kept the center button pressed, what it does is he will stop the event timer. So since there is no timer, uh, snake won't move internally. And he will wait until you release the button. But it is still possible you keep that button pressed and you can press the up or uh, right buttons and you can move the head of the snake. That is still possible under, under current code. So that's it. So that's the main code. Now the interesting thing is you will see there is no uh, real synchronization between software and hardware, right? Your hardware, it will move the snake only when there is a timing event or when you press a button. But you will see the software, there is there is no uh, event to control it. This while loop, it keeps on running. It never stops. It is not waiting for the timing event or it is not waiting for the button press. Ideally, this should be also event driven. So what should happen is you should do all these things only when I, I press a button, only when the timer overflows. So this entire thing should go as some interrupt service routine. But why we are not doing it? We are not doing it, uh, uh, as I mentioned, when in the hardware development to make things more efficient. Okay. So one thing uh, you remember, <clears throat> when we calculate the position of the prey, it is a complete uh, pseudo-random number. And the only way to know whether that position is within the body of the snake is to compare it uh, with the body positions while you are reading it from the hardware. Okay? So this part, he is the one who is comparing that random number with the snake body position. right? So only when we do that, we will know whether the prey is within the body of the snake or not. If you are going for a pure software implementation, what you will do is you will generate a random number and you will immediately compare whether this random number is within the body of the snake. Because you have all the information in software, you just have to compare it with that array. And you keep on generating the random number until you find a number which is not in the body. Either like that, or you have a pool of numbers and all the snake body parts, they are exempted from that pool of numbers and you choose a number uh, from the remaining numbers, which will guarantee it is not in the body of the snake. So you can use either of this logic. But here we can't do it because we don't have the information about all the snake body parts in software that is sitting in hardware. The only time we can do that comparison is when we are reading that body position one by one from the hardware. That is happening using this for loop. That's why we are doing this uh, comparison only after this for loop. Okay? So suppose if there is a prey in the body of the snake, the only way to replace it is keep on reading the snake position uh, from this hardware. So when I tested it, uh, I, it seems like in one second, this while loop runs around 400 times. 400, 420 times. So you are getting same information 400 times from hardware per second in this implementation. But that gives us a chance to recalculate the position of the prey if it is within the body of the snake. So first time we did it, we found uh, the prey is in the body. When the while loop comes back next time, uh, we have the new position, we compare the 
position again whether it is in the body if it is still in the body in the next time when the while loop comes so at some point of time we will find a position for the prey which is not in the body of the snake but on the screen you won't find any of this because as i mentioned before this while loop will be running hundreds of time within a second so you won't feel anything you will just see like uh, uh, the prey appears after some time and even if i test it with a very small playing area uh, eventually he actually finds out because you can ask like what happens uh, if the snake is too big and you keep on reading and the run number never gives a number which is not in the body of the snake but practically uh, that is very rare chances are very 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 rare uh, eventually he will find it out a position that's why we are going for this asynchronous implementation there is no synchronization between hardware and software software is running here but the hardware is running uh, separately based on the events okay so that's the logic so uh, <clears throat> to really understand you have to try this part by part you uh, change the code you add new features you remove the features and find out uh, what is happening on the monitor okay so the code everything is already in git so i hope you will try this out thank you